Hello, I am Flash Isaac, and today I'll be taking you through the Nigerian Immigration Service Mathematics past questions. So pay attention, you will learn a whole lot. And if you like what you are seeing, why not subscribe to this channel for more amazing videos. Now look at this question. It says, what is the probability of having an odd number in a single thought of a fair die? A, 1 over 6, B, 1 over 3, C, 1 over 2, and D, 2 over 3. Now, a die was tossed. A die has six sides. Example, you know a Ludo game? When you play Ludo, bah. So, it has six sides, and the sides are number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Or, we can say the sides are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. These are the sides of a die. Now, it was tossed just once. So, meaning once. And when you toss it just once, the numbers you have are 1 to 6. How about if two uh, fair dice were tossed? If it were 2, this means the first one we have these values, then the second die will also have its own value, 1 to 6. The question says, what is the probability of having an odd number? What is probability? Probability means chance. So if you say, uh, how are you sure that this thing will work? You tell me, it is 50-50. It is 50-50. That means, you are trying to say that the chance is 1 over 2. So it's either it works or it doesn't work. Now, probability of having an odd number in the fair dice. The question you should ask is, what are the odd numbers in the die? Or, what are odd numbers generally? An odd number is any number that can be uh, divided by 2 without a remainder. For example, looking at 2, 2 divided by 2 is 1. So, it divides straight. It is an even number. 4, is, 4 divided by 2 is 2. So, even numbers are numbers that can be divided by 2 or that can be broken down into 2 without remainder. So the odd numbers here are 1, 3, and 5. 5 divided by 2, to give you 2, there will be a remainder. 3 divided by 2, 1, there will be a remainder. 1 divided by 2, it will give you a decimal point. So not a whole number. Now, uh, 1, 3, and 5 are all numbers. This means, out of the six outcomes, three are odd numbers. So, the probability of having an odd number is simply the odd numbers in the fair dice over the total number of sides in the fair die. So, the total number of sides is six. So, three out of six are odd numbers. So, this is three over six. Now, we, 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 let's break this down into the smallest form. This is an, uh, a proper fraction because the up is smaller than the bottom. Having this, we simply say which number can divide both top and bottom without a remainder. 3 can work. 3 divided by 3 is 1. We put 1 here. And 6 divided by 3 will give you 2. So, uh, the probability of having an odd number in a single toss of a fair die is simply 3 over 6 or 1 over 2. In this case, we don't have 3 over 6 in the option, we have 1 over 2. So that makes option C correct. So let's look at the next question. The surname of 40 children in the class was arranged in alphabetical order. 16 of the surname begin with O and 9 of the surname begin with A. 15 letters of the alphabet do not appear as the first letter of a surname. This question is trying to tell us that uh, in a class, this could be a register, the names of children were arranged in alphabetical order. And the record kept was for 40 children. Pupils, uh, precisely, because they are not up to uh, students. <laughs> now, 16 of the surname begin with O. This means 16 over 40 begin with O, 
or 16 out of 40. Then 9 of the surname begin with A. So 9 out of the total, which is 40, begin with A. And they said um, 15 of the letters do not appear as the first letter of the surname. So the letters that we are arranged, 15 did not appear. So this means the total letters considered were 16, 9, and 15. 16 plus 9 plus 15 gives you 40. This means the number is correct, total of 40 children. Now, what is this question saying? It says, find the probability that a child picked at random from the class begins with either O or A. A says 5 over 8, B says 5, uh, 7 over 8. C says 9 over 16, and D says 14 over 25. What is the probability or what is the chance that a charge pick at random begins with either O or A? Now, O is simply 16 over 40 because 16 names out of the 40 began with O. And A is simply 9 out of 40 because 9 over 40 begins with A. The probability of O or A or either O or A is simply O which is 16 over 40 or A which is 9 over 40. Now take a look at this. Anytime you are given a probability question and they say find the probability of this or that, when there is or you add. When you are given a probability question and they say probability of this and that, when you have and, you multiply. This is because or means at least uh, one of them, why and mean both. So or means plus and means times. So in this case, we are dealing with probability of this or, or that. So or has to do with plus. So this is 16 over 40 plus 9 over 40 this is equals now we look for the lcm of, of 40 and 40 now we have the same number at the denominator and you are asked to look for the lcm lcm is simply one of the numbers so we simply pick one of them which is 40 then you say 40 divided by 40 1 1 times 16 16 plus 40 divided by 40 1 1 times 9, 9. So in this case, we are left with uh, 16 plus 9. 16 plus 9 is simply 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. So 25 over 40. You look, looking at the option, there is no 25 over 40. This means, let's break this down. Because five, uh, 25, 5 can divide 25, it can also go into 40. So, 25 divided by 5 will give you 5. And 40 divided by 5 is 8. So, this is the lowest form. That makes option A the correct option. Hope you found this helpful. Now, let's see the next question. Now, take a look at this question. It says... The table below gives a score of students in an English test. So uh, these are the scores. These are the students. So from this table, you can see that two students had uh, two marks. Uh, four students scored three. Seven students scored four marks. Two students scored five marks. And three students scored six marks. Two students scored seven marks making 7 the highest score. The question says, if a student is chosen at random from the group out of the student, we pick a student at random, what is the probability that he scored at least 6 marks? A says 3 over 20. B says 1 over 5. C says 1 over 4. And D says 3 over 10. Now, if a student is choosing at random, what is the probability? Probability means chance or possibility or likelihoodness 
So what? Wh how likely will this student score at least six marks? Now, underline this: at least six marks. What does this mean? At least mean more than six and above. So if I say at least six, it means six or above. If I say at most six, it means a six or below. That is the meaning of at most. At most means the number you mention or less. Why at least means the number you mention or more. So this means a student will speak at random. We are looking for a chance or the chance that the student scored six marks or above. Six plus. How do we go about this? To look for the probability that a student will score six marks, it is simply looking uh, uh, finding how many students actually scored six marks or above over the total number of students. That is the chance. The chance of picking uh, two out of hundred is simply two over hundred, which is one over fifty. So we have all these students, and like I explained earlier. Out of all the students, let's check how many they are. The number of students are uh, 2 plus 4, 6, 10, 20. So we have total students equals 20. Now, number of students who scored uh, 6 marks or above or students who score at least 6 marks. We start from here. This is uh, where uh, six marks begin. Six marks, seven marks. So number of students who score at least six marks will be from here down. So we have six marks. We have seven marks. Five, uh, three students scored six marks. Seven students, uh, two students scored seven marks. So the number of students who scored at least six marks is simply three plus two. That is five. So five. The probability or chance that a student picked at random will score at least 6 marks is simply 5. Those who scored 6 marks over 20. The total number of students or the total outcome. Now looking at the options, there is no exactly this answer. But we can simplify this. We look for a number that can divide the top and divide the bottom without a remainder. 5 divided by 5 is 1 over 20 divided by 5 is 4. 4. So we've broken this down to 1 over 4. Looking at these options, there is 1 over 4. So the correct answer is C. Now, what if they had said uh, a student pick at random scored 5 marks? It will simply be a number of students who score 5 marks, 2 over total students, 20. It will simply be 1 over 10. So students who scored 5 marks is simply 1 over 10. Now, what if they asked you, what is the probability that a student picks or students pick at random scored 4 marks or 7 marks? 4 marks or 7 marks. Now, you check for students who score 4 marks. 4 marks is simply 7 over 20. 7 students out of 20 scored 4. So, 7 over 20 or... Now, 7 marks, 2 out of 20 scored 7 marks. So, or 2 over 20. Now, in probability, anytime you see or, either this or that, it simplifies or it signifies addition. So, when you see or, you add. This gives you 7 over 20 plus 2 over 10. This is equals on um, 9 over 20. What if they are said, what is the chance or probability that a student picked at random scored at most 6 marks? Remember I said at most mean that particular mark or less. So this means at most 6 marks will simply be here. From here down, six months down. So it will simply be 18 students out of 20 students. And that will be 9 over 10, dividing up and down by 2. That is how to go about this. So, so when you are giving table and you are asked to calculate probability or chance, just do whatever 
uh, do everything here at Vespain, you get your answer. And in probability, once they say and, it is no longer addition, it is now multiplication. So these are the rules you need to answer these type of questions. So let's look at the next question. What is the probability that three students waiting in the bank will be served in the sequence of their arrival at the bank? A, 1 over 6, B, 1 over 3, C, 1 over 2, and D, 2 over 3. Probability has to do with possibility. It has to do with chance. Now, three students walk into a bank. Now, this guy is the first guy, then this guy arrived next, then this guy arrived last. The question says, what is the chance that this guy will be attended to first, then followed by this guy, then followed by this guy? Because it is possible to attend to this guy first. It is also possible to attend to the last guy first. In that case, you say, why are you Ojoro? I've been here since this person just came because he has money. You are now attending to him or to her. So what is the chance of attending to them according to how they arrived. Now look at this. The total number of customers on the queue equals 3. Now, looking at this first guy, the chance of attending to this first guy first is simply 1 him over 3. That is the chance. 1 over 3. Because in this case, you have three choices. So you pick one out of the three choices you have. That is the chance of attending to this guy first. Now, if you leave this guy, then to the second guy, this means you now have two choices. The chance of attending to this guy first out of these two has reduced. It will now be one over two. Because you've left this guy, you are now in this guy. So the chance of attending to this guy is 1 over 2. If you now skip these two to meet this last guy, you've left the two. So this means here, yeah, you no longer have choice. So the chance or the probability of attending to this guy is 1 over 1. 1 or 1 over 1. Because once you leave this guy, it means you are not attending to anybody. <laughs> so having this, the probability that the theory uh, students waiting will be served the sequence of their arrival according to how they arrive is simply the chance that this will be served first times the chance that this will be served times the chance that this will be served served also that will simply give you one times one times one is one over three times two six six times one is six so the chance is one over six there is another way you can solve or answer this question the chance at which uh, they will be served uh, according to how they arrive, is simply 1 over n factorial. Where n is the number of uh, students waiting. In this case, it is 3. So the chance is simply 1 over 3 factorial. That's factorial sign. What is factorial? Factorial simply means multiplying downwards. If I say 3 factorials, it is simply 3 times 2 times 1. This is equals 6. So it's a 6. If you say uh, 10 factorial, 10 factorial is simply 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. If you say 5 factorial, 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So that is how factorial works. So final answer, the probability that the three students waiting in the bank will be served in the sequence of their arrival is 1 over 6. Now look at this question. It says a student bought three notebooks and one pen for 35 naira. After misplacing these items, she again bought two notebooks and two pen, all of the same type, for 30 naira. What is the cost of the pen? A. 5 naira. B. 7.5 naira. C, 10 naira, and D, 15 naira. Now look at this. It says, 
a student bought three notebooks and one pen. So let notebooks be N and let pen be P. Now, three notebooks and one pen is equals 35 Naira. This means 3N and many, uh, the student bought the two. We are adding plus 1N notebook is equals 35 Naira. So let this be equation 1. Now, again, the student bought two notebooks and two pens for 30 Naira. This means two notebook plus two, this is P, sorry, plus two P is equals 30 Naira. So let this be two. Now, we've got the equation that relates the notebooks to the pen. We can rewrite this to be 3N plus P or 1P is equals 35 and 2N plus 2p is equals 30, removing the Naira signs. If we arrive at this, this is what we refer to as simultaneous equation. If you don't know how to solve simultaneous equation, I'll share a link to my simultaneous equation videos, and you can also see one of the links uh, top there. But let me assume you don't know, I will explain it uh, very well. We are given a simultaneous equation. You know, we have uh, two unknowns, and they are the same, N here, N here, P here, and P here. We can choose different ways to solve. You can use the substitution method, elimination method, or graphical method for theory exams. Let this, if you call this equation 3, and this is equation 4, from equation 3, we know that 3N plus P is equal to 35. Remember, P is the same thing as 1P. If we make P subject formula, meaning if we uh, say P is equal to 35, then we bring this 3N here, it becomes minus 3N. So it's positive here, as it crosses the equality sign, it becomes negative, that is the minus. So P is equal to 35 minus 3N. This is equation, you can call this equation 5, or any equation you like, or without equation. Now that we have this, Substitute this value of P in equation 4. So this uh, 4, which says 2N plus 2P is equals 30. Anywhere you see P, put 35 minus 3N. So this gives you 2N plus 2. Instead of P now, it will simply be 35 minus 3N is equals 30. So, 2n plus 70 minus 6n is equal to 30. So, here yeah, we simply have, adding the n part, you have 2n minus 6n. So, the minus is bigger. So, this can be interpreted as, you have 2 naira, you are owing 6 naira. You definitely pay from the 2 you have, you will still be owing 4 because the minus is bigger. So this means you are owing 4n. That's minus 4n is equals 30. Now we are collecting like terms. This plus 70 goes this way. It becomes minus. So minus 70. So this is minus 4n is equals. In this other side also, you have 30 and you are owing 70. You certainly pay the 30. You still be owing 40. So this is minus 40. So here, we are looking for n, not minus 4n. So we divide here by minus 4. For an equation to be balanced, what you do to this side must happen to, this, to the other side. This is to make the equation remain the same, to keep the integrity. So here is minus 4. So minus 4 divided by minus 4, leaving behind n, is equals minus minus. 40 divided by 4 is 10. So note, cost 10 naira. Now, if not cost 10 naira, how much would pen cost? Pen will simply cost P is equals 35 minus 3 times 10. Remember, N, note N is 10. So we are replacing N now for 10 in this place to give you 35 minus 3 times 10 is 30. 
So that is equals 5 Naira. So this means the cost of pen is 5 Naira and the cost of the notes is 10 Naira. Wow! Wow, wow, wow! So this is how we do this. That's how we roll it. So let, look at the next question. If the simple interest on 2000 Naira for 9 months is 6 Naira, at what rate per annum is the interest charged? <laughs> now look at it. The simple interest on 2000 Naira, which is the principal, for 9 months is 6 Naira. At what rate per annum is the interest charged? Now, per annum simply means per year. So we are calculating the rate per year. Now, the formula for simple interest is this. Simple interest is equals principal times rate times time over 100. This is the formula for simple interest. Where principal is 2000 Naira, rate is what we are asked for. The interest is referred to as the rate. And the time given is 9 months. But we are calculating per annum. Simple interest is meant to be calculated in years, not months. So we simply convert uh, 9 months to years. So if one year is 12 months, this means 9 months will simply be 9 over 12, 12 years. So the time is equals 9 over 12 years. So we can actually break this down to give us 3 over 4 years. So that is the time. Substituting, they told us that the simple interest is 6 Naira. So 6 Naira is equals the principal, which is 2000 Naira, times the rate, that is what we are solving for. So, arrow, times time, which is 3 over 4, all over 100. This is the same thing as 6 is equals 2000 times arrow times 3 over 100 times 4. It is lega to bring this down. Anytime you have division and multiplication is holding them, it is very legal to bring it down. So this is uh, C is, is equals 3 times 2000 will give you 6000 R over 400. So these two zeros can quickly take care of these two zeros to give you um, C is equals 60 over 4 R. C is equals, we can further break this down to give you um, 30 over 2, 15. So 60 divided by 4 is 15. So this is 15 arrow. Therefore, okay, just um, finding out that uh, this is 60 naira, not 6 naira. So the simple interest is 6 naira, meaning 60 naira, meaning here is 60. Then 60 divided by 15 is. 5, that's 30, well, five, that's 4 percent. So, this is 60, 60. It doesn't affect our calculation up to this point. So, the, if the simple interest on 2000 Naira for 9 months is 60 Naira, at what rate per annum is the interest charged? It is simply 4 percent. Now, take out this question. It says, a man bought a television on higher portions for 25,000 Naira out of which he paid 10,000 Naira this means uh, the cost of the TV is 25,000 Naira and he paid 10,000 Naira if he is allowed to pay the balance on 8 equal installments find the value of each installment so the television cost 25,000 Naira, uh, 25, Naira. He paid 10,000 Naira cash. This means you will be owing 15,000 Naira. That's 25,000 minus the 10,000 Naira he paid. So it will be remaining 15,000 Naira. 
Now it says this man is allowed to pay this 15,000 naira eight times, eight equal parts. If that is true, how much will he pay every time for the eight times? This is pretty simple. If out of 25,000 naira, he already paid 10,000 naira, meaning there is 15,000 naira remaining. We we'll simply divide this 15,000 naira by 8. This is the installment we will pay. So, this is the 8 equal installment. 15,000 naira divided by 8 will give you 1,875. So, this man will pay 1,875 naira 8 times to be up to this 15,000 naira. So, what is the answer? It is simply 1,875 naira. You can further prove it by multiplying 1875 naira by 8. That will be equal to 15,000 naira. So that is the installment. Alright, take a look at this question. It says the size of a square is increased from 20 centimeter to 21 centimeter. Remember, square is uh, a shape with four equal sides. This means, if this, if this is a square, and this side is 20 cm, every other side will be equal to 20 cm. 20 cm, 20 cm, and 20 cm. Now, we are told that this was the square. Now, the side was increased. So, it now became 21 cm, 21 cm, 21 cm. Because once we increase one side, every other side increases and they are equal. That is square. So, this initial square and final square. They said, what is the percentage increase in its area? They did not say percentage increase in length, they said percentage increase in the area. This means we calculate the area of the square when the length equals 20 cm. We calculate the area of the square when the length was increased to 21 cm. After getting this, we can then go ahead to calculate percentage increase. Remember, square has four equal sides, and each of the angles are right angles. That is 90 degrees. This makes the sum of angles in the square equals 360 degrees. The area of a square is the L square. Once you square one side of a square, you get the area. So that is a way to calculate the area of any square or any square shape. This means when the length was 20 cm, a is equals 20 square, which is equals 400 centimeter square. When the length equals 21, area is equals 21 square, that is 441. So we've got in A2 and A1. Percentage increase is simply the increase over the initial value times 100. Now the increase is 441 minus 400. This means the area increased by 41. 441 minus 400 is 41. Over the initial area, the initial area is 400 centimeters square times 100. This is the formula for percentage change or percentage increase. The change is over initial value times 100. So this will give you 41 over 400 times 100. That is equals 4,100 over 400. Um, this to zero, why this to zero? So that is 41 over 4. That should give you 10.25% uh, Option D is correct. So if the side of your sphere is increased from 20 cm to 21 cm, the area or the increase in area is simply 10.25%.
that is one about two, one over and two over hundred. Remember, we said it means over hundred. This is how you solve this type of question. And any question that requires percentage uh, increase or and for percentage profit, if I bought something for hundred thousand naira and I sold it at or uh, one hundred and ten thousand naira, this means I made a profit of ten naira, one hundred and ten minus hundred. So the percentage profit is simply 10 over 100, the cost price times 100. That is the profit. If I bought something for 100,000 Naira and I sold it at uh, 80,000 Naira, this means I am running at loss. The loss is simply 20,000 Naira. I have lost 20,000 Naira. That is the loss. But if it's now percentage loss, percentage loss is simply that loss, 20,000 Naira, over how much you bought it, 100 times 100. So that is the formula for percentage. So 20 over 100 times 100, that is percentage. This question says, convert the speed 90 km per hour of a car to meter per second. A says 1.5 meter per second. B says 2.5 meter per second. C says 25 meter per second. And this is 15 times 10 to the power of 3 meter per second. Now, kilometer per hour simply means kilometer over hour. Or we can rewrite it as kilometer per hour. Why this a meter per second? It's written as meter per second or meter over seconds. Now, one kilometer is equals 1,000 meter. And one hour is equals 60 minutes. And 60, uh, 30 seconds make one minute. 60 seconds make one minute. 60 minutes make one hour. This means one hour is equals 3,600 seconds. 60 times 60. 60 seconds make one minute, then uh, 60 minutes make one hour. So 60 seconds times 60 seconds is one hour. This shows that kilometer per hour or one kilometer per hour is equals 1000 over 3600 meter per second. We can break it down to be two zeros, cancel two zeros here to be 10 over 36 meter over seconds. This is the same thing as 10 over 36 meter per second. This is the same thing as 10 over 36 meter per second. So, 1 kilometer per hour is equals 10 over 36 meter per second. Now, we are asked to convert 90 kilometer per hour to meter per second. If 1 kilometer per hour is equals uh, 10 meter per second, 90 km per hour will simply be uh, 90 times 10 over 36 meter per second. That is the conversion. To so simply give you uh, 900 over 36 meter per second. This is equals 25 meter per second. Equals 25 meter per second. So this is how you do the conversion. You don't need to bother yourself cramming. So just understand the principle, the conversion. Life is good. So that is it. Thank you. And this is NIS uh, uh, Mathematics Past Questions Part 1. Watch out for Part 2 of this video because it's going to be bomb.